One of the more confusing aspects of using a dedicated Astro camera is the term back focus. Essentially what this means is that whatever optic you're using, whether it's a lens or a telescope, it's gonna create a focal plane where the image is actually sharp. And what we're trying to do is position our camera's sensor exactly on this spot. That way we can actually have a focused image. If our camera's way out here or way here, our image is gonna be blurry and we're not gonna be able to ever get a sharp photo. So ultimately the term back focus is just positioning our camera sensor exactly at this spot. That way we have a sharp image. Again, with a DSLR and a lens, we just attach it and the image plane is exactly on our sensor. But with a dedicated astro camera, we have to use a variety of adapters and extenders and all kinds of things to reach that precise spot. So it's much more complicated, frankly. Now this is the example that I'm gonna be using because this is the gear I have. I have a cooled mono camera with a micro four thirds sensor. And if we look here at our little diagram, it tells us exactly how to arrange everything for a back focus of 56 millimeters. First thing we have our camera here and it says without the 11 millimeter ring. So more than likely when you first open up your camera, there's gonna be a little black ring screwed on here. You need to unscrew that. Then we're going to screw the camera directly into the filter wheel on the side where it says EFW. Then once the camera's connected to here, we're gonna get these other adapters, screw them all together in this order, and then attach that to the other end of the filter wheel. Once all these little different adapters and things have been screwed together, we should now have a back focus of 56 millimeters. Now, if we go back to our diagram here, we can see that the distance from here, the back of the telescope to here is about 59.7. But thankfully the space cat here, we can zoom in and out with a focus ring on the front and that should help to move that focus plane forward and backwards and allow us to still achieve focus. So as long as we're fairly close to that number here, in this case about 59.7, then we should be able to focus our images. So what I wanna do now that we've kind of explained the basics is I'm gonna pull everything out and we're gonna go through this together and we'll see if it works because this will be the first time I'm doing it. And we'll see just how much of a hassle it is. But I wanna be clear, you, you need to figure out the back focus for your particular lens or telescope. After we get this working with the Space Cat, I'm going to switch over to a telephoto lens from Nikon and we'll see how that works. Okay, so if you're ready to follow along, the first thing you wanna do is grab both your camera box as well as the filter wheel box and just pull everything out of there because we need all kinds of these little different adapters. Once you've gotten all the different adapters laid out on the table like I have, let's go back to the laptop and then pull up whatever graph is going to correspond to your setup. In my case, I'm gonna be using the filter wheel, so we're gonna be looking at this diagram here. And we'll just go piece by piece and then make sure we have everything as we see on the diagram. First, we need the M42 to M48 adapter. It says it comes with the camera. And I'm gonna assume it's this piece here just because there's some threads on it. It looks kind of like the diagram and it's pretty small as well. So I'm assuming that's what that is. Next up, we have the M48 T2 16.5 millimeter extender. It comes with the camera and that's right here. Thankfully, they've labeled at least some of these pieces and we can tell that's obviously that one. Next, we have 11 millimeter ring comes with camera. That's going to be, in my case, already attached to the camera. So if I pull off the front cap, you'll see there's a thread here and we can unscrew that. But I'm gonna leave that on for right now and keep it covered up so no dust reaches the sensor. But that's our 11 millimeter ring. Then we have the T2 T2 adapter. It says it comes with a filter wheel. So I went to my filter wheel box and I pulled out this thing, which I'm assuming is the adapter we're gonna need. Finally, we have the filter wheel itself, and we have that right here. It comes with, in my case, there's at least one of these pieces on here. You can unscrew both of these so there's nothing attached at all, and that's ultimately what we're gonna have to do, but I'm just leaving those on there for now, that way no dust gets inside of there. And then at the very end, of course, we have our camera, but like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to unscrew this and then attach the camera directly to the filter wheel. And that's gonna give us a total back focus of 56 millimeters. And again, you're gonna to wanna to refer to your lens or telescope manufacturer. It should say somewhere what the back focus is. But I want to right now 
attach everything like we see in the diagram, and then we'll try putting that into the space cat and we'll see if it actually focuses. All right, first, let's just start with the camera end and work our way back down. I need to pull off the cap here and then unscrew the 11 millimeter ring. And you kind of want to be quick about this because we don't want dust getting in and screwing up our sensor. So I'm just going to uncap, or put the cap on for now. Then we have our filter wheel here. I'm going to unscrew both pieces on either ends and put that with my filter wheel stuff. We don't want to get everything mixed up here. Okay, now we're going to attach our camera directly to this piece here, I'm guessing. And it should just screw in. Let's hope so. All right, I did the trick. So now our camera's attached. It's kind of upside down and things, but it should still work for what we're doing today. Then, now that we have the camera attached to the filter wheel, we need to grab that T2 adapter, which again, I think is this piece here. It says it came with the filter wheel. So I'm going to, I guess just, I don't know the best way to do that. We'll just go that way. All right. So if you have the same thing here, it looks like that's the piece and there's like some threads on both sides. It looks like it doesn't matter which side goes which. So we'll just screw that now into the filter wheel. Okay, now we're gonna grab that 11 millimeter ring that we took off the camera, which should be this piece here. And I'm gonna screw that on. Then we're gonna use the 16.5 millimeter adapter. We'll screw that in next. Finally, the M42 to M48 adapter, which, like I said, I think it's this guy here. So let's see if that works. And as I mentioned, I'm still a beginner at all this, so I don't know all the technical names. And maybe this wasn't the right piece because it doesn't seem, eh, it seems like it's just a little too shallow. Yeah, I'm not really sure. That just doesn't seem right. So I'm gonna leave that there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go grab the space cat and we'll see how this might even connect from here. So let me go grab that and we'll continue on. Okay, we got the space cat here and normally you have to take off the little cap here on the back. And when we finally get that off, there is a thread here. So I'm hoping that will just connect right to there and we won't have to worry about it, but well, let's find out. So. We'll take our piece here and our space cat. And it looks like it's a match as far as I can tell. So I'm going to see if I can now screw that on. Okay, so there we go. And seems to be pretty secure. What I'm going to need to do though is rotate the whole tripod collar thing so everything sits properly and what we'll do is loosen that. Okay, so we're gonna try something like this here. Hopefully we got all in the frame. And now what we need to do is connect a USB cable to the back of the camera here because we need to uh, be able to at least see if we can focus. So at this stage, you're gonna need to get either your ASI Air or a laptop, and we'll probably just use a laptop today, that'll be easier. We'll connect a USB cable from here to the laptop, and then we'll use an application that we looked at to see if we can even focus. And then we're also going to put the telescope on a tripod, point out the window, and make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, so what I've done is I've plugged in a USB cable that came with the camera into the blue port there. That's going in, of course, to the laptop. The space cat and everything is ready to go. I've taken off the lens cap. One of the things I was mentioning earlier is that even if the back focus isn't perfect, 
by zooming in or zooming out, we can adjust the focal plane on the back and essentially have more flexibility. So I'm hoping, all things considered, that this is actually gonna work. And we've pointed it out the window there to the cliffs. That way we can see if it's gonna focus properly. And everything right now is just attached to a William Optics base there. You can even, the nice thing with the Space Cat or the Red Cat is you can actually flip this around and you can use this on a ball head if you want to do that. You just have to take out the screws on the underside of here and flip it around. But that's what we're working with here. And what I'm going to do now is start up the software on my laptop and we'll continue on. Okay, we're back at the computer and hopefully you watched my previous video on how to get all the appropriate software. If not, I recommend going and doing that right now and you can pick up with us after you've done that. Very briefly though, just download the drivers here on ZWO's website. Also get like SharpCap or the ASI Studio, whatever you wanna do. In my case, we're gonna be using SharpCap, which we have already loaded up right here. And usually all we have to do is go up to cameras and thankfully it's working. Uh, we see ZWO ASI 1600. If I click on that, okay, we can see something. That's a good sign. Now what I'm gonna do is adjust the exposure here because very often it's either gonna be pure black or pure white. And that just means your exposure slider here is not set correctly. So move it around until you see kind of a neutral gray image. There we go. You can also adjust the gain if you'd like to. I'm gonna keep my gain low though, because it's pretty bright. The problem I think I'm having though is the camera's kind of pointed up at the window and not out the window as much as I would like. So what I'm gonna do now is get up, manually hold the camera, and we'll see if we can at least see something out the window. Well, I'm really excited that worked on the first attempt. That's one of the things I'm trying to demo throughout this course is if you're just a normal person trying to do this, how easy or how hard is it gonna be? And I was really worried about the back focus, but that was very simple, thankfully, because we found this website from ZWO. I'll have a link for this in the description if you want to come on over here as well. The big thing that's going to help you out, you just got to make sure you're looking at the correct diagram. For example, if you didn't have any filters or filter wheel yet, you would use this diagram here. Again, if you're using a micro four thirds or one inch sensor. If you had an APS size C sensor though, you would use this diagram here. And then in our case, we had the filter wheel. So we use this diagram right here. At the very least, we got it working with a space cat. That's a big step up. This is going to be my main imaging optic. But next, I want to see how we can connect this to a uh, camera lens. So in order to do this, you're probably going to need to get the EOS or the Nikon adapter for the filter wheel, if you're using a filter wheel anyway. If not, you might want to get the T2 adapter. In my case, I bought the Nikon lens adapter for EFW, and that's going to allow us to connect, again, the camera to the filter wheel and ultimately to our camera lens. Unfortunately, there's no diagram here for connecting to a camera lens, so we'll have to see if we can figure it out ourselves. I'm gonna go grab the 70 to 200, and then we'll try that next. Okay, here is our EFW to Nikon adapter, and I'm gonna guess all we have to do is attach this to the back of our lens and then screw on the camera and everything. I wanna be clear here, this is one of those lenses that by default, it's gonna be wide open, the aperture. You might have an older style lens, kind of like this one here, that has a mechanical dial. If you have one of those older lenses, then it's gonna to wanna to try and stay with a very narrow aperture by default. And you're gonna to need to do something special to find a way to keep that little mechanical dial stuck open. ZWO recommends using like a little rubber band that you might use for like orthodontics. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. We'll cover that probably in a future video. But today, I'm going to just install the adapter onto the lens, and I'm gonna try screwing on the camera, and we'll see if that works. Okay, what I've done now is I've taken off all the different little adapters and extensions and all that. The camera's connected directly to the filter wheel. The filter wheel's connected directly to the lens adapter. Let's see if this is going to work. We'll go back to sharp cap, choose our camera, and let's hope this works. <laughs> okay, I can at least see the dirty window there. That's a start. Now I'm going to adjust the focus. 
All right, that's awesome. We got it working now. We can finally see the cliffs. Just to recap what I did, I have the camera plugged directly into the filter wheel, no adapters or anything in between. The filter wheel was then screwed directly onto the lens adapter. The lens adapter is just kind of like attached to the camera lens like normal. And we now have a sharp image just by adjusting the focusing ring on the lens. And I'm actually kind of surprised that's even easier than using the space cat. We don't even have to mess around with any of the extensions or adapters uh, besides obviously the lens adapter and it just works. So we got that working. That's awesome. And I'm really happy that all worked out. Okay, we covered a lot of ground in today's video, and to be honest, I was pretty nervous about recording this video because I haven't even pulled the camera out of the box yet, let alone try to connect it to a lens or a telescope, but we managed to do both of those in today's video, and hopefully we demystify the entire process. If you're going to be using a space cat or any other kind of telescope, the first thing you need to do, just so you have an idea, is research the telescope itself and get a rough idea of what the back focus is and where the image plane is. In this case, it says it's about 59.7, roughly, from the end of the telescope to the image plane, at least for the SpaceCat telescope. Then we went over to this link here on ZWO's website, and it's under their tutorials here. And we just scrolled down until we found the correct setup that matches what we have. In my case, I'm using a filter wheel and a micro four thirds sensor camera. So we follow the directions more or less exactly like they said, the one thing I don't think I did though, is I didn't worry about this adapter here. I just screwed it directly onto the rear piece of the space cat. So for me, I just had the 16.5 on the end. That was screwed into the 11, which was screwed into the T2 to T2, which was screwed into the filter wheel. And the camera was screwed directly into the filter wheel with nothing on the edge here. That would allow us to focus with the space cat. And then for the camera lens, all I had to do was grab this adapter, attach it to the back of my lens, like I would almost do with a DSLR. And then I attached the filter wheel and the camera. I took all this other stuff off and that was able to allow us to focus now with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. I'm actually really excited now because I was really dreading this. And now that I know how to focus everything, I can finally start going out and taking some photos. We got the filter wheel installed, although if you saw that video, that was a huge pain. And my recommendation would probably be to honestly buy threaded filters rather than the unthreaded filters. Cause it's a huge pain to mount those. And I wouldn't do that again, but in any event, we now know how to focus our camera in either our lenses or our telescope. Now we can head out in the field and actually start taking our first images. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and I'll catch you guys in another week.